So yesterday, uh, we have seen very fundamentals, right? Uh, some concepts and how to create a now and left project and then how to get a simple screenboard application. Okay, I hope um, uh, you get, if people are uh, understand about those things. Um, if you have any question, you can ask me, okay? Huh? Now I wanted to I want to tell about these annotations. We're going to see some annotations today. Okay, there are many annotations in a Spring Boot application. We will going to see what is the use of the annotation. Before that, I want to tell what is starter project. What is starter project? Yesterday, when we create a, a Marvin based project, what we have done. Uh, um, we have uh, added one dependency. We have added one dependency. What is the dependency? It's Apache Commons, right? It's Apache Commons. When I open that project, let me open that project. So I want to work with uh, string uh, string functionality. So I added an Apache Common as a dependency. Okay, through this dependency, um, I'm able to work some string functionality. Okay, this provides some um, uh, bunch of uh, string function functions. Using that, I can manipulate the strings. Okay, like that, um, Spring Boot provides a lot of starter project. This each starter project is a dependencies. Each starter project, nothing but a dependency. Okay. Um, we created a one simple web application yesterday. We created a one simple web application, right? And if you want to create one simple web application, what you have added? We have added one dependency called Spring Boot Started Web. Spring iPhone Boot iPhone Started Web. We have added that. Okay, this is a starter project. This dependency called as a starter project. If you want to add, if you want to add any modules in your Spring Boot application, Spring Boot provide a lot of starter project. Using the starter project, you can enable particular feature in your Spring Boot application. For example, I want to work with database. I want to work with database. I want to connect database. In such a case, Spring Boot provide one more starter project called Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. We need to add this dependency. We need to add this dependency in our form.xml file. Through that, we can enable DB manipulation in our Spring Boot application. Like that, Spring Boot provide bunch of starter project. Starter project, nothing but a dependency. Nothing else. Starter, but starter project, nothing but a dependency. If you want to work with web application, we have to add this, this dependency. If you want to work with uh, JPA uh, database manipulation, we need to work with the. Uh, we need to add a Spring Boot starter data JPA. If you want to work with security, I want to work with uh, security. For that, Spring Boot provide one more starter project. That starter project dependency we need to add here. Okay, so we have many starter project. We'll go to see in future one by one that. Okay. Okay, this is what I want to tell about the starter project. Okay, now I want to um, uh, show some examples of each annotations. Yesterday, we created a simple web application. If you want to create a web application, what you have done, we created a one controller class. We created a one controller, test controller. Test controller is a, a class. That class, we make it as a test controller class. How, how did we make that? Using our test controller annotation, using our test controller annotation, we make this test controller as a, um, a, a REST based class. Okay, using this class now, we can implement several RESTful and uh, REST API endpoint. We can uh, we implement several REST APIs. Uh, at the time of saying our REST controller, what will happen? This particular class registered in your IOC container. IOC container or application context. We can call it in call it in two terms: either application context or um, IOC container. Okay, um, all your Java classes, whatever Java classes you have created, those Java classes deployed in, registered in your application context or Spring Boot application context. Whenever, whenever user request this particular endpoint, whenever user request a particular endpoint. Your Spring Boot application check this mapping is available or not. This mapping available or not. This mapping is available or not in the particular risk controller. This risk controller will be available in the application context. You go and check all the controller class. In the controller class, if any methods available with this mapping, um, this method get invoked. This method get invoked. Okay, that is the purpose of risk controller. Using risk controller, we can create a 
restful fms class in that class we can implement several restful api okay now get mapping get mapping nothing but let me uh, explain by opening a postman yesterday i showed using the browser right after i showed using the browser postman is a client tool postman is a client tool using this client tool we can test our restful api we can we can test our restful api whatever restful api we are implementing that restful api we can test through postman postman is a client tool to test a restful apis whatever we are developing okay so uh, client whenever send a request part of the request they will they will tell it's a get request or post request or delete request or put request they will tell what kind of request it is okay mm -hmm. by default request a get request whenever send a request that request consider as a get request using that get request we can send some minimum amount of data we cannot send large data we can send uh, 255 uh, kb i think 255 kb of data we can send in the address bar part of this address right part of this uri we can send the data as a query parameter that is the purpose of get request okay yesterday i saw that i showed that demo right if you want to implement a get method we have to use get mapping if you want to implement get method we have to use a get mapping annotation using the annotation we can create a get endpoint we can um implement a get endpoint if you want to invoke if you want to invoke this invoke uh, invoke this particular url through the post postman what you have to do just to paste this uh, url sorry just to paste this url then select what is the what is the method say get method right just uh, then select get then paste that url then send it it is not working because server is not started i am starting the server now server is started server is running under 9090 right so we have to we have, we have to say 9090 9090 then method is a get send it when i said i am getting this response here this is my first restful web services this is my first restful web services okay whatever message i am returning here that message coming as a response here okay now here this also get mapping but i am uh, naming i given some path here display so we have to say here display this this is this is display method call i am getting this message in the in the postman as a response okay through this way we can test our restful services through postman client okay now what is the next one we can go into see post mapping uh, before post mapping we will go to see how to send the parameter request parameter i told right we can send some parameters part of this query part of this how to we will go to check how to do that okay now i want to uh, uh, send some data from the client server server side using get mapping using get mapping i want to send some data client to server side how to do that for example in the client side we need to tell question mark color equal to red i am saying color equal to red this is a query parameter if you want to add a query parameter in the of the url you have to say question mark then your query parameter name my query parameter name is a color equal to what is the value of the query parameter red is the value of the query parameter now i want to send this data in my method in my rest method how to do that so here i have done that but we need to do in server side in the server side we have a one annotation called at request param at the request param then followed by you need to say then uh, open the parenthesis you have to take this parameter then paste it here same parameter name you have to mention come on this is a string type right i want to pass string type so we have to say string color this is the way of 
receiving the query parameter coming from the client. Okay. Whenever you call this method, what will happen? Whenever you call this method, this parameter automatically comes here. Comes here. This value, this red value, mapped to color variable. Mapped to color variable. Now I want to print that value. Plus color. You are entered. Uh, You are passing color as color. You are passing color as whatever this variable contains the value. Here I am passing red, right? That red will print here. Okay. I want to make it as a uppercase. Let's say uppercase. We're going to restart the server. Server is restarted. Go to the postman. I am passed here the in this parameter, right? Not in this parameter, not in the display. I am passing this in this parameter. So we need to remove the display. Question mark color equal to red. See here, you are passing color as a red. You are passing color as a red. I am sending your passing color as a I am converting color as uppercase. It comes with the uppercase. So this is the way to passing a query parameter from the client to server side server side we have to use for anti annotation called at the request param in the request param argument we have to pass what is the query parameter name you have to pass that then to map that query parameter value we need to define one variable and that variable is a string variable here string and the color whatever value associated with the color name that value assigned to this color variable okay then you can manipulate that uh, value according to your requirement in your program that's it. Here I am converting that as uppercase. Then sometime uh, I don't want to pass the query parameter. Sometime I need, sometime I don't want to pass. Okay, what, what we can do in, in such a case? Let's say I'm going to remove this. I am sending. It's giving error. Bad request. Because it's expecting the parameter. Because it is expecting the parameter. See here, the server said giving the error. Required string parameter color is not present. Required string parameter color is uh, not present. So we have to pass. It's a mandatory. If you want to make it optional, there is a one more param one more argument we have to pass. Record equal to false. If you say record equal to false, you don't have to pass this query parameter all the time. It's optional only. Now I'm going to set without parameter. Yeah, it's giving a null point exception. Why? Because I am here, say color dot two uppercase and passing. Since I am not passing any value here, the color having a null value. Color having a null value, right? So we have to do some condition. Okay. If color not equal to null, then return this value. Else, return without color value. You are not passing color. Okay, I'm going to restart the application. You are not passing color because I'm not passing anything here. So, it will come to else part, return this value to the client side. Now I want to pass color equal to yellow. You are passing color as a yellow. Now I am passing color value populated here. So coming to here, printing this statement and the converting color to uppercase. You clear about the request param now? Okay, what is the next one? Next, we will go and see post mapping, put mapping, delete mapping. Post mapping, put mapping, and then delete mapping. So, get mapping for mostly to retrieve the data from the server side. We can send some minimal data, then we can that data we have to send in address bar. Part of the um, 
endpoint URL we have to send. That is not a secure. We cannot send sensitive data using get mapping. Okay. The post mapping. The post mapping, I want to send some lot of data. I want to send some bunch of data. I don't want to send the data secure manner. In such a case, we can go with post mapping. In such a case, we can go with the post mapping. Okay. Post mapping data is bind with the request body. So bind with the request body. As part of request body, we can send the data to the server side. We'll see that how to do. At post mapping. At post mapping, I am saying send. Then public string send. At the request body, at the request body, string data. Here I am sending very simple data only. Next example, I will going to send. I will going to show how to use a Java object. Okay. Now I want to um, print this data. System dot out dot print ln. Data dot to It's a very simple uh, post endpoint. Okay. I don't want to return anything. I don't want to return anything. Public void send request body. If you want to send data to the request body, we have to use an annotation called request body. Request body. For this request body, we need to construct json string we need to construct a json string inside in the client side inside the client side we have to send as a json format that json format mapped here mapped here that value i am manipulating inside a inside a method body okay let's see the example how to do that local of send Ash send, then the method type is a post, right? So we need to say post. Then go to body. This is the place where you're going to construct, where you're going to uh, provide request body of your endpoint. I want to give one endpoint, I want to give request body to this endpoint. That part we need to do here. The postman, the body section, click the body section. Here we have to pass. We have to pass. This is a simple uh, string, right? So we can pass just simply here. This is from Postman client. That's it. See, so, yeah, this is from Postman client. I am passing just to a sim uh, single string here. This act as a request body. This is from Postman client. I am saying uh, whenever we send. Uh, Okay, the request body will have that data. Request body will have that data. Okay, that data I'm converting here as uppercase. This is from Postman client. So this is the way to send a data part of request body. Okay. Now next example is how to pass a Java object. How to pass a Java object that we will going to see now. This is very simple for understanding purpose. Next step is we need to see Java object now. I'll going to create a one class. One package here. I'm going to get on package saying um, model. Then new class customer. I'm going to use as a entity package name as a entity. Okay. I'm going to map this customer to database uh, in letter, not known. Well, in the entity package, I have one class called customer class. Okay. Then here I'm going to create private int. Sorry. Private int customer. Customer ID. Okay. Then private string. Customer name. Then private string customer address. I created a the attribute in the customer class. 
now i want to generate only setter method i want to generate getter and setter both are equal to generate getter and setter okay then i'll going to create one constructor public customer int customer id string customer name string customer address this dot this dot uh, customer id equal to okay now i created one customer for this uh, uh, sorry i created a constructor for this customer whenever call is constructed i am able to populate this attribute through this constructor i am able to populate this attribute right okay now i want to pass this customer as a request body go to uh, test controller at the request body just you have to say customer customer that's it now this customer act as a request body of this particular api the particular rest api here i'll going to create uh, one more attribute this is uh, i'll going to get one more thing okay. private uh, double fee private tax double tax okay double fee comma double tax dot c equal to c dot tax equal to tax okay tax i don't want to calculate tax okay tax i don't want a tax here i want to make it as a uh, total value total value total value okay i i don't want to um, use um, tax total value i don't want to use instead of constructor okay just i want to use only up to c okay the test controller customer act as a request body okay now for this customer we need to design a json json file this on a string we need to design a json structure okay that is a client side responsibility okay according to this customer we need to design a json request we need to design a json request let's see how to do that open the braces close the braces what is the parameter what is the attribute customer id we have a customer id then i am i am saying value equal to 1 for customer id then customer name i am passing Suresh K seven. Then I am passing customer address. Abstract. Then finally fee. Fee equal to two thousand. Okay, this is the request I need to pass. I need to pass customer ID, customer name, customer address, then fee equal to two thousand. Okay, this is the um, rules of constructing a JSON request. Customer within double quotes you have to pass the attribute, then colon, then value. If it is a not a uh, string value, just you can uh, pass it without double quotes. Then customer name, uh, customer name is attribute, so I am passing within double quotes, then colon. Uh, name is a string value so i am giving the value within the box okay like that we need to construct the json request we have done the json request whenever you send the 
whenever you send a request what will happen that customer whatever attribute whatever value available here that value that value populated here that value is populated here okay <coughs> let's see it's populating or not okay in customer customer id equal to customer dot get customer id string customer with a name name equal to customer dot get customer name string address equal to customer dot get address customer address then double fee equal to customer dot get customer get fee get fee i don't have a getter method i think generate get a setter for get fee okay then get fee okay now i got all the values which is coming from the client side whatever value we are sending here that value i am taking and assigning to one variable one variable then i want to calculate the tax let's see um fee into 10 percentage of the gst for that fee i am saying gst is 10 percentage divided by 100 divided by 100 Double x equal to this value. Now there is a in the customer there is a one more attribute, right? One more total value. One more attribute total value. I want to say that um, double total value equal to plus tax okay now I, I find the tax value here then i'm adding tax value plus fee then assigning the total value total value here i want to um, send this data to the this uh, this output i want to send as a response to the customer side, uh, client side how to do that we can say here new customer customer equal to customer response equal to new customer then what is the constructor here? You have to pass customer ID, customer name, uh, then customer address after double and the fee, uh, fee. Then we need to pass uh, this also. We need to pass total, total also, total value, total value. Okay. New customer, customer ID, comma, name, comma, address, comma, fee, comma, then total value. So I am constructing uh, this value coming from uh, client side. Then I am calculating tax. Then I am passing total value part of the constructor. Then I want to return this data, return customer response. Okay. So I want. I, uh, Return customer response, change the return type to customer. That's it. So, this customer object, uh, customer class acts as a request body. Using that, I am sending a data. I am sending a data. This is a request body. I am sending a data. These values mapped to here. That value I am taking here. Here I am doing a small logic. I am taking a fee. I am doing a, a, a tax calculation for 10 percentage. This uh, the, uh, the the output is come uh, assigned to the tax for assigned to the tax variable then adding that value to total value then again sending that customer object as a response data to the client side by initializing this constructor okay let's see if it's coming up not. see i got the response Customer ID, uh, customer name, 
customer address c equal to 2000 total value equal to these are coming with tax 2200 this is the way to sending a request body return the response getting the response from the uh, server side for getting a response i am not doing anything for uh, uh, to map the request body whatever request body sent by the client i want to map that request right that request i mapping through the through our request body through our request body i mapping the client data in the customer side then from the customer i am taking that value i am doing some manipulation here after ma after doing manipulation i am reconstructing the customer object with that total value this total value i am sending as a response back to the customer that value printing here okay any doubt sir i am having one doubt yeah uh can we send multiple object uh, in a single request body yeah we can send multiple object that is no restriction okay then how the system uh, would recognize that uh, this is the customer object and this is the employee object uh, some other object that how the system would uh, differentiate the those multiple object according to we need to construct the json request okay that is all we need to do the json request properly for example customer is avi Customer is own object. Inside a customer object, you have a address object. Okay. okay. Address is own Java object. What you have to do? This address object inside a customer, right? Uh, so based on yes. um, this structure, we need to say here address like that. We need. Okay. 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 According to the object, the data object, we need to construct the uh, JSON request. Automatically, they'll get populated. I will definitely those kind of example we'll go to see. Okay. Hmm? Sir, now, uh, yeah. Sir, uh, in the postman, we are sending the request body, right? Or uh, the object. Yeah. We can make we, if we meet, if we can be any one property also not a problem, right? Or uh, all the properties are mandatory. In the request body, it's not a mandate. Not a mandate. Okay, okay. we can uh, uh, remove this also. No, no, not a problem. We can miss any one property also. Not a problem. Not a problem. Body. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. So for that reason only, we can send anything as empty also. For that reason, we need to validate the client is sending properly or not, data properly or not. For that, we have a Bring good validation framework. Using that validation framework, we can check which data is valid, which data is not valid. That will go to see. Hmm? Okay. Uh, see here, the customer, uh, this uh, customer right, automatically converting as a JSON, right? Uh, a JSON uh, response. We are not doing anything. This thing happening automatically by Spring Boot application. That is the uh, magic of Spring Boot. Uh, if you work with a Spring Framework, some older version, what you have to do, we need to configure. Want to convert one Java object to uh, JSON object, we need to configure. But these things happened by uh, through Spring Boot through auto configurations. When you look at this sectional library, You can say Jackson, uh, ja core Jackson annotation, core Jack uh, Jackson core, Jackson annotation, Jackson data bind. Okay, this uh, uh, a library for converting Java object to JSON object. Okay, converting JSON object to Java object. This library will take care. Uh, this configuration automatically done by our Spring Boot application. This is not possible in the, the case of older version of Spring Framework. We clear about this, right? Okay, next one is um, then we're going to talk about um, put mapping and delete mapping. I'll go to you in small example now. But when you create a uh, write a crude operation, write a restful uh, services, that time I'll go to tell more about that uh, put and delete mapping. Okay, what is the purpose of put and delete mapping? What is the purpose of put and delete mapping? We're going to see. See, generally, the post mapping, right, we're going to use whenever you create some resource 
in the server whenever you create some resource in the server that time we'll go into this post mapping that time we'll go into this post mapping delete mapping is whenever you delete some resources from the server that time we'll go into use delete mapping that time we'll go into use a delete mapping whenever you update some resource to the server that time we'll go to use a put mapping okay these are three different mapping post mapping delete mapping put mapping and one more mapping get mapping get mapping for mostly retrieve the data retrieve the data from the server post mapping for to create a object create a resource to the in the server if you want to create customer that time i need to use post mapping if you want to update the customer that time i want to use uh, put mapping if you want to delete a customer from the database that time i want to use delete mapping okay for this is through this uh, endpoint right Co consumer can easily understand client client people can easily understand okay this endpoint using a, a post mapping that meaning they are going to create some resource if any endpoint using the delete mapping the customer can understand that using endpoint uh, using this endpoint we can delete any resource from the server so through that uh, uh, different kind of mapping consumer consumer easily understand that what is the operation of particular endpoint okay okay this is a small example i'm going to start the server so put test put test when you send it will never work because method not all it's clearly saying method not all because i am using a put mapping so we need to select put we don't have to view body everything just send put this is a put mapping then i want to check delete mapping delete like delete send delete mapping okay so uh, now we have seen that uh, various kind of uh, endpoint uh, get mapping then uh, post mapping put mapping and a delete map after completion of uh, this annotation right after completion of all this annotation we will work with one small assignment we will work with one small assignment when we need to use put mapping when we need to when we need to use a delete mapping okay like that we can going to create one small assignment tomorrow now probably tomorrow we'll do that okay hmm? now we'll go to see other uh, annotations there is a path variable there is a path variable what is the purpose of this path variable we'll go to see send path then i'm saying um, customer using path variable path, using path variable annotation we can send a variable path variable we can send a path as a variable in a, our request path in our endpoint url for example i want to pass some value here in the, as part of path i want to send some value for example uh, uh, send slash suresh this can be a suresh or anything then anything we can pass here for example i want to view one customer the customer id is a 10 i want to use that customer meaning we can pass that customer id here now we are passing here i am passing string variable i am passing suresh this suresh value will be populated here will be populated here then i am printing here then i am here printing here this is the purpose of path variable as part of the a endpoint require endpoint url if you want to pass some values we can achieve through the path variable annotation okay
for the mapping, it's a send path. Send path. It is a send path slash Ravi. I'm passing Ravi. It's a post mapping, right? So we have to select post mapping, send. See, you have passed a customer name is a Ravi. If whatever you're passing, that will go to the server side. Here we can do some manipulation on that variable, then return back to that uh, client as a response. Now I'm going to say uh, mm, India. Okay, this is the use of path variable. This is the use of path variable annotation. Now I'm going to say service component at auto wired. Service component auto wired, then Spring Boot application, configuration, component scan and pin. This annotation we're going to see now. First, we go to say, say, what is the service? Okay. The presentation layer always is a risk controller. What we have seen now. Using at risk control annotation, we created the rest service classes where we implemented many rest endpoint method, many rest endpoint method. Now, next one is service layer. Service layer is a Java class. The Java class contain only business uh, implementation, only business implementation will contain. Okay, how to create that service class? How to make one class as a service class? in a Spring Boot application. For that, we need to use add service annotation. For that, we need to use add service annotation. Hmm? Here, I'm going to create one package called service. I'm going to create one more class called customer service. Customer service. Now I want to make this uh, class as a service class. For that, we need to say at service. At service. Whenever you say at service, what will happen? When you start the Spring Boot application, it will check the Spring Boot application check any um, classes annotated with at service or at component or at risk controller. If annotated with like this annotation, what will happen? These classes taken by the spring framework and a register inside a spring application context spring application context then if you want to use the service class what you have to do we need to use one, one annotation called at auto wire using at auto wire annotation we can use the service class anywhere in your application okay whenever you say at service you are registering this particular service class in your application context in the spring boot application context now in this in this class we can create some business method now i'll go to show one simple method this method i will going to call inside a risk controller i'll going to call a inside a risk controller public void public customer i want to turn customer object the risk controller there is a uh, one method right ah oh, yeah get customer i'm saying get, get get customer i want to copy this entire logic to here entire logic to here customer customer then i'm performing this logic here i'm returning the customer as a response back to the my test controller so I'm going to um, remove all the code from here. Now I want to use this customer service. Now I want to use this customer service inside this controller. For that, what I have to do? We need to use an annotation called at auto wire. At auto wire, private customer service, customer service. Customer service, customer service. Now I created an um, object for customer service through at auto wire annotation. At auto orientation. This auto orientation check if the customer service object registered in the application context. If it is available, I can use here. Otherwise, it will throw error. Okay. 
now i want to call the method customer service dot get customer service i want to pass that request body customer then i can just simply return simply return whenever call this send post mapping method i am pa client passing customer object as a request body that customer object i am passing the get customer method which is coming from the customer service class instead of customer service uh, sorry instead of get customer method i moved all the logic i take the customer id customer name customer address then i am calculating the tax value then setting a total value to total value attribute then finally returning that uh, updated customer as a response back to this test controller response back to test controller this customer again return back to our client that is postman okay so the starter now we will going to set send now customer name is um vitai second street field is a four five so i am getting the same response no changes right i am not changing anything in client side the only i changed in server side i introduced one service class the service class i implemented one method called get customer that gets get customer accepting a customer as a parameter in that customer i am taking the customer value and i am doing some logic and returning final value back to test controller test controller uh, uh, calling the get customer from the customer service we don't have to uh, manually initialize because this is already registered in the spring application context through at service class sorry through at service annotation so i can directly use it by using at auto wire annotation by at auto wire annotation then i am calling this um, get customer the get customer return the customer the customer value i am sending to the client sending to the client as a response okay i will going to tell about component later okay i don't want to tell about, about that because uh, technically there is no difference between service and the component annotation technically there is no difference between service and the component annotation but we have to decide when we need to use service component when we uh, sorry when we need to use service annotation when we need to use uh, add component annotation that we need to decide based on your project requirement but technically there is no difference between add service annotation or add component annotation i will going to tell that later in, in using some other example okay now i want to jump here now i want to jump here add spring boot application annotation add configuration annotation then add component annotation we will going to see what is the use of this annotation okay we have seen uh, Uh, example for all the annotations except the component right now we we'll go to see at spring boot application configuration at component can be when you create a spring boot application it will create a one application class application class that application class annotated with at spring boot application annotation annotated with at spring boot application annotation this is the core annotation load all the configuration it's a uh, loading the tomcat starting the tomcat so everything done by this single spring boot application annotation without this our spring boot application cannot start okay this is the main annotation we are using in the application class when you go inside this class sorry when you go inside annotation you can see here enable auto configuration component scan then you can see configuration there are some tags are available and whatever uh, say configuration is available component scan is available then enable auto then it's, it, it it has a enable auto configuration through this uh, spring boot application spring boot application attached tag 
spring boot auto configuration happening spring boot auto configuration happening through this component scan spring boot application scanning all the service classes all the risk controller uh, done by through component scan done by through component scan through this configuration through this configuration class your application class act as a configuration java file act as a configuration java file so this spring boot application uh, spring boot application tag contains configuration uh, uh, annotation component class can annotation and uh, at enable configuration annotation three annotation available inside a spring boot application annotation tag okay it's doing three annotation tasks three annotation tasks in the older version of in the older version of spring boot what you have to do is we notice like this at the, at enable enable auto configuration at component scan at the configuration like that we have to say in the old version of spring boot now the latest version they have introduced spring boot application annotation so we can use only that annotation that will take care of everything okay that is the purpose of at spring boot application annotation okay okay now i want to do one one example i want to give an example using component scan using component scan okay we have one test controller right, right? yeah we have what test controller i'll going to create a one more package here package i want to create a package under com under com please remember that i create one package that package where it is available under com under com now what i'll going to do is i'll going to remove this test control inside a test package inside a test package okay i moved it now my test control is available inside a test package right now i'll going to restart the application so i started now 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 i want to invoke any endpoint any one endpoint i'll going to invoke this endpoint or i'll going to invoke this endpoint i'll going to invoke this endpoint so 9090 right sorry it's 90 it's giving error not found our spring boot application not able to find display mapping okay it's not able to find test control itself that is the meaning of this error it's not able to find display mapping why i did only one changes i did only one changes what i did i created one package under com under com then i moved the test controller to the test package that that's the uh, that is the one changes i did after that i am not able to invoke any uh, rest method reason is in the spring boot application annotation having one component scan right component scan that component scan scanning all the java files scanning all the java file which is annotated with at risk controller annotated with at service okay this application class where is available under it garden right since this application class available under it garden the component annotation scan the scan the all the classes only under it garden under it garden sub packages only okay it won't scan other packages this test class test packages available outside of it garden outside of it garden that is the reason component scan annotation not able to find this test controller component component scan annotation by default scan scan from where this application class is available this application class available under it garden so it scan only under it garden whatever sub package is available inside it garden only those those area component scan will scan okay now uh, it is not working because i moved to outside of it garden that is the reason it is not working how to resolve this problem you can tell that component scan please scan it from here that also possible at component scan com if you say com what will happen the component scan 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 the classes from the com, com, com package from the com package 
by default it scans from it garden because application classes available inside it guard okay let's see now it's working or not So this is display method call. This is a display method call. Now it is working. Why? Because it is available. Uh, because I am saying to the component scan, scan it, scan it from the com package. Scan it from the com package. The previously when I test this, I I am not using post method. That is a different error, I think. Okay. I will uh, one more. I will comment out. I will comment out. I restart the server. The same error not found because but previously I, I selected a post that is a not right value test we have to select get okay I am selecting get then display saying it's not found why because component scan scan it from IT garden now I want to tell to component scan please scan the class files from the com package we starting the application Now it's working because I'm saying to component scan, please scan the Java files in the com package. You understand what is the use of component scan now? Any question? Okay, now, now we're going to see the example of configuration. You're going to see an example of configuration. I'm thinking that I want to create a one configuration class i want to con thinking that i want to act, uh, create a one configuration class i'll change this okay i'll go to change this back to normal i'll remove this okay the spring boot application since you're using configuration annotation configuration annotation, that is enabled uh, auto configuration. When you look at here, you can see. Uh, not here. Yeah. Yeah. The Spring Boot, uh, the Spring Boot uh, application annotation using the configuration. Okay. This configuration annotation. Okay. That's the reason this class acts as a configuration file. Configuration file means whenever start the application, Spring Boot application automatically that class get invoked. I want to create such a kind of Java class. I want to create such a kind of Java class. I have some requirement. Whenever start the application, whenever start the application, I want to call certain Java file. I want to I want to invoke certain Java file. In such a case, in such a case, we can use at configuration annotation. At configuration annotation. Let's see how to do that now. New Java class my config. My config now I'll go to say public my config system dot out dot print and learn. This is my own configuration file. I am saying this. My intention is I want to execute this line at the time of starting the server. My intention is I want to execute this line at the time of starting the server. That is my requirement. In the, in the real time project, we have a, we will get a, such a requirement at, at the time of starting the server. Read this data, uh, do this operation. Something like that will come. Okay. In such a case, we can use a configuration annotation. Let's start now. Now this will not print. Why? Because I am not using a configuration. I'm searching this. It's not available anywhere. Okay. Now I'm going to add the annotation at configuration. See here. This is my 
own configuration file. This is my own configuration file. This is my own configuration file coming. At the time of starting the server, I got this particular statement here. That meaning, at the time of starting the server, this class get automatically invoked by our Spring Boot application. So what is the purpose of configuration? If you want to create any file as a configuration file, in such a case, you can use a configuration. OK. What is next? Next is the add bin. We'll go to this here, add bin tag. OK, go to service class, customer service. In the customer service class, I annotated it with that service, right? Add service. This add service, what it will do? The that service register this service class inside a spring application context that is uh, in inside IOC container. It is uh, register this class into the IOC container. Whenever we need, we can use this class using at auto -wide. Okay, that is the purpose of this at service. Now I want to use without using this at service, without using this at service, I want to register one class inside a IOC container, inside the application context. In such a case, we can do, in such a case, we can do add bin annotation. Okay, let's see how to do that. I'm using the same my config. I'm using the same my config. Okay. This uh, one more thing I want to tell this customer service when when this customer service get registered in the IOC container. Whenever start the application, components can stand all the Java classes. Since this customer service annotated with our service, it will take this class and then register inside the IOC container. Application context. Either we can say application context or IOC container. Inside that, we go and register. Okay. Like that, whenever I start the server, whenever I start the server, I want to register my own Java class inside IOC container. In such a case, we can use admin. Admin. Okay. Now I'm saying add. Uh, I'll go to get first. I'll go to create class. New class. Mm, product. Product. I'm going to create product class. Okay. It contain string name. Private string name, then I'll keep it only one variable, then generate get under setter method. Now add bin instead of my config class. I am saying that product 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 new. Product of what is the product? I'll go to get a constructor. Public product dot name equal to name. New product. I'm saying my product. I'm saying return new product at my product. Using add bin, I am registering this product product. I am registering this product object inside the application context by adding one default value. By adding one default value in the product name. Like this situation, we can use. But this add bin method always available inside a configuration class. Inside a configuration class, then only it's possible. Why? Because whenever I start the application, this configuration file will get removed. This configuration file get removed. Uh, Java class get in work. Then, since you are uh, annotating with admin, this product method get in work. Inside the product, I am saying new product. This this uh, Java class automatically get registered inside the application context. Okay. Whenever you use this uh, product um, using uh, auto wired, 
this product will come with this particular value come with this particular value when we are going to use bin object add bin add bin annotation in such in some scenario i want to initialize manually my java bin object java class and i want to set some default value in such a case we can manually register our bin inside the ioc container inside the ioc container that that particular bin annotation section should be available inside a your java file your uh, configuration file your configuration file let's see now now i'll going to say at get mapping public string get product return the my config file the uh, this my config file my, my config file i have annotated in that configuration right so it will this this file ca called whenever start the application at the time of start the application i am defining one product method the product my product method annotated with add bin so your spring boot application initializes this uh, product object and then register inside ioc container register inside ioc container that this product value i am taking i am using in my risk controller saying at auto wait product saying at auto wait product that product value i am displaying through this get product endpoint through this get product endpoint whenever call this get product endpoint what will happen whatever default value available here that value will returned by this particular get name method okay now i am saying product here here my product is coming when i say product i am not passing anything here just i am calling this endpoint just i am calling this endpoint at the time of calling this endpoint this method get in work inside this method i am saying return product dot get name return product dot get name what will happen get name will have a default value my product why because at the time of loading the starting the application i am initializing here when you while initializing this product i am adding one value called my product that value coming from your coming from uh, from the product object are you clear with this uh, add bin annotation any question please ask me so today we have covered what is startup project and we have um, saw some example of each annotations then what is the use of spring boot application how to what is the use of configuration uh, how to use component scan this thing we have seen today but we are not creating a perfect rest endpoint we are not creating a perfect rest endpoint what it mean perfect this is a rest endpoint we created this is working as we expected but a way of creating rest endpoint is not proper we have to follow some standards okay we have to follow some standards to create a restful web services by saying this restful web services sorry by saying that this will endpoint the client must understand what is this red point uh, what is this rest endpoint doing either doing delete either doing uh, uh, update or retrieving this thing by seeing that rest endpoint itself customer should understand in such a way we need to construct our rest endpoint that is i am not doing here that is i am not doing here okay what we can do tomorrow we will going to write a small assignment very small assignment i am not going to do any database operation okay but it's kind of database operation i will create our own database i'll create our own database where we can do add modify delete and uh, retrieve this operation will going to do tomorrow classes okay 
by doing that operation by doing that load operation we will construct our resistance point very properly very properly okay as of now we understand that how to use this annotation that's it but you are not following the standards okay hmm. tomorrow we'll go to see all standards how to create a proper resistance point okay hmm. Hmm. still not subscribe this channel please subscribe it share this video to your friend circle click bell icon for regular updates thanks for watching this full video